Hi, welcome uh, to Conversations with Code Heroes. And we have the honor and pleasure of having Ma Ines from the Philippines, who's currently in Hawaii. Um, so we are having a series of uh, conversations with Code Heroes. And our first conversation is with the one and only Ma Ines. My name is Magdalena Woolery and I am a mother of four children. I'm a nurse by profession and the founder of Breastfeeding International and I'm also an IPFAN member. So Ma Ines. Hi, Mabuhay. Long live in Filipino language. And I would so I'm so impressed. Uh, truly appreciative of your effort, Magdalena, for making this documentary of our story of what happened, how we fought for the breastfeeding rights of the women and children, not only in the Philippines, but around the world. And also in particular in Asia, where a ferocious milk marketing <laughs> is happening in the name of profits over health. Yeah. Um, my Ines, what, what is a code hero to you? What is a code hero? Code hero, heroine. And if you look at, you know, how the children would have heroes, you know, how they, they idolize the, the protectors <laughs> of truth and good from evil and injustice. So for, for me, it is about uh, siding with truth and also especially with a marginalized mother sector who are the nurturer of the next generation and how they are duped, how they are they become prey of uh marketing of seduction of 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 you know cheating the moms and not only cheating but stealing the treasures the 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 power of the mom to nurture and i'm referring to breastfeeding that is the most powerful resource that is so innate in human, especially mothers who have given birth and are caring for babies, caring for the future. And the only resource that is the food depot, not only as food, but medicine as well for the survival of our children. And that is the first food of humanity and how that is um, snatched, taken away and becoming an endangered practice. So, and then when the moms are duped in believing to buy the best imported product and not and losing the confidence in her power of breastfeeding, substituting that power with a very it's a glamorized product but in truth it's very cheap and poor and it is one of the cost of illnesses but in advertising and promoting that product it come it came in many disguises so that's why i said the moms became the prey of the milk companies as predator. So when they ended up losing their milk, substituting with a imported product that they thought they were able, they were lied to believe that it is better mm -hmm. than breastfeeding. And consequently, their children got sick as well as the mom and they're pushed to poverty, then there's nobody answerable or accountable for this. Yeah. And what happens, yeah. the mom is blame and shame. Shame of her bodies when she breastfeed, 
anywhere and also blame for their children getting sick. So I think this is the cruelest injustice. So we take the side of the moms, whether they are rich or poor, in whatever economic, socioeconomic standing, they are cheated. They were seduced. That's why it is so important that we were able to come up with the international code to regulate the marketing of breast milk substitutes, breast milk supplements, milk and other products and beverages, including teeth, bottles, and pacifier that undermine the power of breastfeeding. In this case, we translate this international standard to become a national law in our country. And we made it stronger because it has punishment. They can go to jail, imprisonment, fine, and revocation of their license issued by the government. And not only that, the milk code says, according to the Supreme Court, they, it, the Supreme Court, Supreme Court mandated and interpreted the milk code law that the sanction provision says about accountability, command of responsibility. Command of accountability means if the sales agent, the med rep, who goes to the hospital and peddle the products because their presence is to sell, definitely. So when they are caught in that forbidden act, prohibited act, they go to the mother directly or even advertise or promote. It's a marketing. Then if they are caught, they are not only the ones that should be, that should be, should be the culprit, the violator of the milk code, but also her supervisor, her district manager in that locality, then the vice president for marketing, the vice president, the officers of the milk companies, including the president and the chairperson of the board. So you see, if only milk code is is an um, being disseminated and if we as long as it we understood it that it protects the consumers rights it protects the right of the mom to breastfeeding and the right of the baby to breastfeeding so it entails two human rights so but a law to become effective or to be meaningful in our day-to-day -day lives there should be also a milk code protector. Yeah. So, because the moms are vulnerable at the stage of pregnancy, birthing, and childcare. So, and as nurturer of the next generation. So, we should be with them. Mm -hmm. Who will speak for the voiceless like the babies? Yeah. Who will speak for the mom who's so occupied with multitask? And whatever happened to their baby, if they get, if the baby got asthma, the baby got diarrhea, the mom is blamed. Mm. In the family, whoever gets sick, the mom is asked to stop working from outside to attend to the sick at home. That's why we call them the first doctor at home. Yeah. The first food producer. It's so, just really, it's so they're important. so multitasked. They are super wi women, but they are so un undervalued. In fact, they are the last to eat <laughs> at home. They will work so hard. The whole family will work so hard when they have a baby to buy a tin can of imported expensive product for the baby. Yeah. And that already costs the meals of the family for a month. Yeah, And if the baby gets sick, where will they get the money to buy for medicine that is not accounted for 
in the advertising and promotions yeah. or messages that were given to the moms no, to entice them to buy the product. So Code Hero, we are needed yeah. to join the moms to, to, to implement the laws and to account the duty bearer, the government officials in that law is responsible for 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 implementing for protecting breastfeeding for implementing the milk code but in that year momentous year um 206 207 yeah. so i just want us to uh, my ines was about to begin the story of uh, the <laughs> Philippines government and this is such a important story for the world to know about so I heard that when Philippines government tried to update their 1986 code legislation that the pharmaceutical lobby group it was led by the American milk companies took the government of Philippines to court um, I just want to set the background for that um, and we have a document that was available online. I'm not sure if it's still there or if it's disappeared, but um, UNICEF wrote a report. And I think it's really important that people um, understand that this was not just any court case, it was a big war, it was a big battle. And I just want to read us an extract from that report because my Ines knows it very well, but maybe uh, our friends around the world may not know. So let me share this. It's from UNICEF report um, from the nutrition sector in New York. Um, it was published in 2009. And uh, this is the quote, the importance of using evidence-based arguments backed by well-respected sources and going on the offensive, UNICEF's and WHO's ability to marshal the facts concerning the dangers of formula and the use uh, and use the evidence effectively in the very high powered debate that took place in the media, the courts, and the halls of Congress. Pulling together the key studies internationally and extrapolating the figures to illustrate the impact of formula use in the Philippines was not an easy task. Taking long hours on the part of UNICEF and WHO experts with assistance from CDC, a WHO spokesperson reported that as the battle progressed, the sophistication of the industry increased. In addition to fighting the battle on the basis of scientific evidence, the struggle had to be waged on legal grounds. At one point in the milk code hearings, a hearing room was declared full when breastfeeding advocates asked to attend. They insisted and on being admitted. And what did they find? They found that almost 75% of the attendees were milk company lawyers. I just wanted folks to get a taste of the battle that happens also behind the scenes from code heroes and advocates. Um, and my Ines, I also heard that a sensational story about the mother support group of the Philippines. Apparently, the rule was no banners uh, in the courthouse. So a creative way was strategized. And UNICEF, um, I heard UNICEF paid the hotel room for the artist to paint the banners on the mother's and grandmother's breasts. Is this true? And tell us everything. <laughs> Yes, I was one of the 21 moms who bear the breast as mother's protest because this is too much to take. Mothers were enraged, really angry to strip of our bodies in front of the Supreme Court, in front of the media, in front of the public. Because how can we express 
our anger when when a, a, a law to protect breastfeeding will be contested in court with the use of their money and power so what can we what can a consumer do apart from boycotting these milk products but how could we say it in public our anger that they they are they are trampling the future of the philippines so we decided to ask the university of the philippines known artists teachers and students can you paint our bodies we will bear our breasts in front of the supreme court and some lawyers <laughs> said don't do that the supreme court will be angry or disrespecting we said i don't care because the only the mothers can feel this we give birth to the milk code we really watch from the very beginning of conceptualizing until we give birth up to rearing it it's like our child because it's about our child yeah our children so our babies so my breast i told the artist can you paint my message what's your message it's about the 16000 death according to department of health statistics that 16000 babies died and they are not breastfeeding and if they are not breastfeeding they are formula milk feeding and true enough i went to the san mateo marikina children's cemetery and i saw there because there were reports that you look in every grave of the baby there are tin cans and you will know what brand the baby was using because they put the candles and the flowers on that tin can and i saw the american milk company's products were all displayed in every grave including nestle all and these are imported products so i told the artist who painted on my body on my breast i told her six milk and murder 16000 death according to ns national statistics health according to doh survey so they painted that graveyard on my breast mm -hmm. and then another mom says i want to show in my breast uh for bottle feeding uh suffering bottle feeding baby malnourished and a breastfeeding baby that is well nourished so the the artist painted sunshine smiling breast baby because you know you your 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 <laughs> the bummy's tummy is uh you know you have the curve the tummy fat fat belly <laughs> she draw she painted uh, uh you know the malnourished baby have this uh, fat yeah, belly yeah. but emaciated bones yeah. so she painted that and in in lieu of the breast she put the bottle so on the other breast there, the baby breastfeeding and then she put sun sunshine smiling oh. so 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 immediately on that body it shows the facts of the study the evidence base about the risk of formula milk feeding because the consequence is is ill health yeah so respiratory diarrhea cancer so many so <laughs> But it was very surprising how... because um, people didn't realize, I think, this was the, um, the tactic of surprise from the mother support group and the grandmothers because they were had clothes on, right? It was under the, your human banners were under your shirts. And when yeah, you we went have... out, you did we that. Have buttons. Was... We have the button, the yeah. button, 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 button 
button uh t-shirt button shirt dress blouse yeah so when we were walking on the street so it's still just covered with our button but yeah. when we reached supreme court uh front the front door of the supreme court the gate and then the media were already there lining up then we shouted protect the milk code we are angry we are the mothers the 21 mothers representing 21 years old milk code wow. in the year 209 that's june 19 so we bare our breasts and even the media were surprised <laughs> they saw all the messages and then another another message was rx you know the prescription of the physician rx breastfeeding so they showed baby breastfeeding on the breast amazing but if you look at the our painted breast the the policeman guarding supreme court thought we are wearing a shirt yeah <laughs> because they were painted by prominent artists yeah it's so so they, they thought they were wearing shirt but it's... they you didn't know we're already bare breasts yeah so we landed in all media locally nationally internationally for one month the wow. issue of the milk code was talked about and there were many students making their researches their thesis, it's all over. But before that, we could never get into the media. We yeah. could never get into the front page. You did it. Because you, you did it. Because and it's so inspiring, you know, um, to also think out of the box as a code hero, you know, holding a banner like that. But look, and I think on the photo, which I'll share um, later, is the there was also pregnant women, grandmothers. It was beautiful. Yes, we occupied the front page of the newspapers, including wow. television, BBC, including yeah. Japan, Hong Kong, even Africa. So they were calling us. They were so happy that we did that. And not only that as i said before what before that event of mothers protest we couldn't get into the media and we were told by many of the journalists in the newspapers they said ines don't be surprised if you will if no news on milk code will be published because the milk companies issued a secret policy memo oh, wow. to the owners of the media and it says yes you publish about the goodness of breastfeeding but don't publish anything about the milk code you know we wrote 100 letters to the editor how come our 100 letters in all the newspapers did, was ignored but there was a letter from uh wow we working women <laughs> that was put up by the milk companies to to do the advocacy of oh bottle feeding is okay for working women wow so, so it was so, a corporate capture of the media as well so but your your protest was successful, my Ines. You're a real, true code hero, and it's so inspiring. So I wanted to ask you, as a code hero, what advice do you give to young people, the future generations of Ibfanas, of code heroes? What advice do you give them? We have to be principled. And with that principle, we have to be committed and at the same time, compassionate, compassion, passionate, fighter, carer, all in that. But above all, we are not afraid because what we are doing is truth and justice. Mm -hmm. And outside truth and justice is evil, <laughs> profit, greed. You know, when the milk companies filed the lawsuit at the Supreme Court against the 
officials of the Ministry of Health, Department of Health, the, the Secretary of Health, the Minister of Health, the Deputy, all the Under Secretaries, and the Assistant Secretaries. How many of them? Eight? They were they were they were accused. Accused of what? By the milk companies. Accused by the multinational milk companies and pharmaceutical because they form a group, PHAP, Pharmaceutical Philippine Healthcare Association, Pharmaceutical Healthcare Association of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. They also form a group and filed that lawsuit. And, and they said in the Supreme Court, they said in that document, in the name of trade, mm -hmm. in the name of our economic investment, so it means over health for profits. So, but our constitutional right says public good. So that's why we are doing it under our constitutional right. So we are not afraid. They should be the one to be afraid, but they are not. They're using dirty tactics. And that documents of 6,000 pages, we found a document that would like to make a, a publication in the newspaper, one page advertisement showing that babies who are breastfeeding beyond six months will get malnourished. And they cite a Malaysian study. We got that uh, fax letter at the time, you know, into 2006, 2007, it's fax letter. And we got the Abbott document. Wow. Asking, yes, asking the lawyers of that, of the milk companies, of Abbott milk companies. They they hired a law firm. And it says, you try to interview the, the scientists, the nutritionists that we have given on uh, incentive that we have that these are our allies and interview them and then build that malaysian study that if they breastfeed longer they will get malnourished yeah so they want to distort the fact that yeah. even working women can breastfeed and can manage given the support that can preserve their breast milk and even if they're working mothers and even if they're breastfeeding Babies at one year old, two years old, the Supreme Court, three years old, the Supreme Court says, we have to protect the young child sector. And yeah. there is no age barrier. There is no defined age to stop breastfeeding. Because this young sector can breastfeed even up to seven years based on anthropological age study. The Supreme Court was clear in defining the milk code. Yeah. Philippines so that... is a, a wonderful example for other countries. I I hope uh, decision makers and policy makers also watch this video because if they look at the Philippines code legislation, it is strong. It is a, an important tool to protect women and children. Yeah. We gave birth to this code and up to now. So we have to walk our talk. Then we don't only advocate, but we also teach. Yeah. We also support moms. We have a breastfeeding call center to support young parents to, to be part of the nurturing. And um, yeah. we grandma breastfeed too. So there is no age barrier for breastfeeding for women it is women's power yeah and you definitely walk the talk my Ines I want to honor you you're not you're not just my mentor you're not just my code hero you are a code hero to the Philippines and to women and children around the world that know about the importance of breastfeeding in emergencies and you really walk the talk 
This photo that you can see on the screen is my Ines there with the team during the Tal emergency volcanic eruption. And I went there to uh, be with my Ines and support their team. You really are a hero. And I just want to say a huge thank you. I love you, we love you. And um, I hope we can have more conversations and learn more from you. Thank you, my Ines. Thank you, Magdalena. You are the angel boobs. <laughs> I know you always call me angel boobs. I love you. Yes, you are code hero too. Okay.